finally back in the firewood business. I've got a few cords of wood to make up today. Uh, I'm going to use their Eco Pro 300 Range Road processor. It's a great little machine, and this would be uh, Range Road's entry level machine, I would say. It's a couple, three years old. I've done some modifications to it to make it a little better. I had to go away for a week to work. I know, crazy, eh? I got to work for a living, but uh, now I'm back. So it's been a, probably eight or ten days since I made a video, which is fine. I'm not going to try to stick to some arbitrary schedule. But in the time that I was gone, the black flies have come out and they are hungry. And it's just absolutely crawling at my skin. So once I get this machine started up and running full throttle, it moves enough air and makes enough fumes that the flies will dissipate some. So anyway, you may as well watch me make some firewood. I'm going to speed this up, slow it down, do some time lapse so you don't got to sit through the whole hour and a half or whatever it takes me for me to make a, a quart of wood. And uh, anyway, I'll try to get it down to a reasonable time, but you'll get some realistic expectations of what you can expect out of a machine just like this. And lots of guys are asking questions about this machine. Um, it wouldn't be a full-on professional machine. I've made it a little better than it comes. It's got uh, a 22 horsepower V-twin Honda motor instead of a single cylinder Kohler. Um, there's a few little odds and ends. I've made a, a bigger wedge, um, six-way wedge instead of the smaller six-way wedge, just so I can make use of the, the more power, that kind of thing. Anyway, I've uh, done a few other odds and ends to stiffen it up. But, man, I'm getting eaten alive here. I gotta get to, I gotta get to making some wood. Follow me along.
I have to stop and go get some fly dope. This is terrible. It's the worst I've ever experienced. And, uh, I'm being eaten alive. Anyway, fly dope break. off <laughs> try to get myself a little bit more comfortable pretty bad anyway i'll get used to it i always do this wood is quite small it's uh i'm into a small pocket i guess when it was delivered to me and i find that very difficult to make any headway it's uh it takes the same amount of time to drop that bar through a three inch piece as it does to cut it through a 12 inch piece so you can imagine how slow it goes now <laughs> after i've had some good wood here. There is some good wood in that pile. There's some crooked wood too. And I'm... Anyway, you take the good with the bad, I guess. And uh, I'm going to process it, try to get it delivered today. I'd like to do three cords today if I can. Um, but it is supposed to be quite warm this afternoon. 20, I think 24 is supposed to be mid-afternoon. I might want to go for a motorbike ride today. So anyway, with a fly rod on my backpack. That would be awesome. Anyway, let's get at it.
that's a big half a cord. What do you think? Oh yeah, for sure. So that's a, a deck's worth. I filled that deck this morning. Um, like I say, I'm in this small wood. It takes forever. It seems like it takes forever anyway to get this small wood processed. Sorry about the shoddy cameraman work. I'm not a pro with that, that's for sure. But you got to really love what you do. Be out here in the black flies and stuff squishing your fingers sometimes and the sawdust flying in your eyes. And I like I like this. It's, it's not that it's um, particularly hard work. It's not thought-provoking work. It's just good honest work you can make a day's pay pretty easily um, this machine I'm not into it for a whole lot of money I've got a few other odds and ends that I want to do if I don't get a bigger more commercial machine I'm gonna uh, definitely want to make some modifications and uh, I like to make believe it or not an eight-way wedge I'm gonna change the pump on that motor I'm gonna put a dump valve on the return uh, side of that cylinder so that as soon as I as soon as the cylinder starts to come back it goes back quickly and a bigger pump so that I can start sawing the next piece of wood at the same time I want to put a couple of teeth on the chain if it's possible maybe not teeth but uh, on the round bar I'll show you on the uh, live deck let me go over here so these chains are a simple way they they forward the logs this is all connected to another chain and sprocket and hydraulic motor over here, which I've got a, a control valve right there where I'm standing. But if I were to take this, this bar here and I were to put, say, two inch tall, three of them, maybe two inch tall, I don't know what you call them, spikes, paddles, whatever, that would catch the next log, but also stop the previous log. When I load the deck, I put this up and I, I put these up. And then I load that, I move my tripod over the way I'm hitting the dirt with it. And I, I load it and I fill it right up tight to that. And this prevents all of the logs from just rolling onto this, uh, onto this roller business and just creating a literal log jam. We don't want that to happen. Do you guys see all these flies? This is crazy. This is the worst I've ever seen. I don't know if it's the mud that's up here or what, but anyway, I'd like a breeze to come up, look after them. But anyway, I like to have what's called a, I've seen on other processors, they have a, a paddle here that would advance one log at a time. And that is called a singulator. And what it does is it singles out one, one log and allows me to, uh, to just advance one log at a time. I'd also like to either add another roller out here for longer logs, like 16 foot logs. Sometimes um, a log will roll off and then I have to pick it up. Looking from this angle, you can see I've got a lot of debris in the middle of that. I've got to remove all of this whole thing. I've got to lift this up, clean all this out. I'd like to put a roof over it so when it does rain, I can still process wood. This represents about 45 minutes, probably, of processing. So it is going fairly slow today. But I've got some bigger logs I'm into. That's a nice size. That's kind of the perfect size log right there. That's about a 12-inch uh, maple, nice hard maple. That'll, that'll add a lot of wood. And that one in the bottom is about the same size. And then there's still some tiny ones in there, about four inches or so, but I'll make use of it. When you get into some of this stuff in here, like this log, can you see the crook that's in that log right there? And then it, there's the other end of it up there. Move my hand, it's trying to focus on my hand. So anyway, that one there I'm gonna put aside. I won't even put that into the system. It ends up that kind of a log ends up being uh, more trouble than it's worth on the processor. So I bring them over here. I put them in a pile on the edge of my wood lot right here. These are the ones that are either too big or too crooked or got a couple crotches in it or something like that that'll just end up causing me grief on the processor. And then I cut them with my chainsaw and then split them with the old split fire. And uh, I got some upgrades for the split fire too. You guys are going to be excited over that. Uh, that's a great, a great splitter for two people. It's slow with one person, but it's way more than twice as fast with two people. So anyway, this is, uh, I don't depend enough on this income to invest $50,000 or $60,000 into, a, into a, a commercial processor. There are lots out there. I went to demo one a couple weeks ago. Loved it. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it's not far from here. I could have it here in two hours and, uh, I could lease it 1200 bucks a month or something like that. Just makes me nauseous. I don't make any payments on this stuff right now. 
Um, but I will have another machine here someday. I'm just gonna get the most, most of this machine. So the hole that the, that the wedge fits into is getting sloppy and commercial splitters have got a, a spine that this will actually push against and I'll keep that from, from slopping around. I'll put a hydraulic ram up here to lift this up and down to adjust it hydraulically. But I will cut this out right here and I will drop a piece of probably three inch by whatever thickness that is, three quarters of an inch in there. And that will give that a, a good support so that it can't change the angle of it. Sometimes it, it jams up because the angle changes. So that will be a, a big improvement to this splitter. You can see I have a crack starting right here, right there. See, there's a crack here starting in the splitting chamber. So I'm gonna weld that up as well. I want to put a taper here. This is in the uh, feed. I wanna put a shelf here that's tapered down at an angle seems like logs always hit this before they'll hit the wheel so if I put a taper in here it'll ramp up on there and the way it'll go um, these are not connected this isn't connected to this other than the hydraulic hoses it seems to be the right level I can raise this up and and change the uh, change the angle of it but anyway well, I better finish this cord of wood I don't think you guys need to watch me anymore with that right now as far as I can tell I'm just feeding flies so I better put this camera down and get to work Thanks for following an old man. Appreciate all the support. Channel's growing great. I don't really have any plans or, or goals. I'm just letting the channel do its own thing. But you guys are making it all happen for me. Thanks a million. Over now.
according to the timer on my camera there, that took just a little under seven minutes to load altogether. That includes taking a log over to my dead pile. So that's all right. That's, uh, that's probably going to fill this trailer up. Another half a cord, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Man, the flies are bad. Did I mention how bad the flies are? My goodness. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> Complain? Work? I've always said something that, uh, I don't know. I, I, I even think it's an original thought. I don't know if I've stolen it from somebody else, but I know lots of people that complain about everything. And they complain about the heat. They complain about the cold. They complain about the flies. They complain about me. They'll complain about you. And I just tell them, stop, stop, stop. Pick one thing. You're allowed to have one thing to complain about. Complain about the flies. Complain about the heat. Complain about the cold. You can complain about me. I don't mind. I got great big shoulders. I'll, uh, I'll help you. I'll find you lots of stuff to complain about for sure. But anyway, today... The thing I'm going to complain about is the flies. I'm not going to complain about the heat, cold. I'm not going to complain about you guys. Um, anyway, just uh, just a little funny anecdote. I'm not going to bore you guys to death with watching me finish loading this uh, trailer. I think you've already seen that. Or I've already said that, I should say. Um, I might check in after I get it full. Um, it's got to go only five minutes from here, so it's going to be an easy delivery. Right now, I'm going to go down to the house, and I'm going to have a cup of coffee and a muffin. And then come back up and fill this up and deliver this before lunch. Have a great day, everybody. Over and out.